Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to give you an update on all of my seedlings, both in the plant room. Some of those have even made their way out here already. You can see them right behind me. And then we're also going to open up all of the water jugs that we planted up with seeds this winter to try out the winter sowing method. So this one here that I've already opened is the Green Globe Artichoke. I planted, I think, three seeds in here, two of which came up and are looking great. And I noticed that one was trying to pop through the top hole there yesterday. So I thought, you know what? We should probably get some of these open and let them have a little bit more room to grow. And I'm not ready to plant these things outside yet. Most of these will be going in in the next couple of weeks. You can see I'm wearing a coat today. It's supposed to be 30 degrees tonight. Uh, but no other freezing temperatures in the 10-day forecast anyway, but you just never know. Um, so I think just opening them up and keeping them in here is the safest route. But let me show you the others. So there they are, right where I left them. Three other ones I did open because they were getting a little bit too tall. And I'm just excited to see what's going on in here. I mean, you can see, if you get down here, you can see inside but I really just wanna open them up and really inspect them. So I am going to move all of these into the greenhouse and then we'll get to work. So I've got what I can fit here on the table and the rest there are on the ground waiting for their turn. So real quick, I seeded these mid-January. We were getting some work done on our reverse osmosis system inside. Um, so I was having to buy water in these jugs and I don't typically need to do that. So this is the first time that I've ever had like enough plastic containers that work for this kind of project um, to actually do this project. So it was kind of a fun way to recycle these. Um, and I actually have another bag full of them in our barn. Uh, we have our faucet fixed now, uh, but I was able to gather up more so I can do this again this next winter. Um, the benefits of winter sowing is that you put these seeds in, they're outside, um, they're receiving rain or moisture through the top hole. So essentially, in most cases, like what I was reading, is that you water them once to water them in and then you don't need to usually water them again until really late in the season, until about when they're re ready to be planted outside. But we live in a very dry climate and we hardly got any moisture this winter. So I actually had to water mine quite a bit. Like I had to check them every single day. Um, so they were maintenance for me, but they may not be for other people who are actually getting rain and snow and things like that. But the other benefits are they don't take up space in your house. You don't have to have grow lights and they're already hardened off to outside kind of weather. Um, so I think those are some really great benefits, especially if you don't have the space inside or you don't want to mess with getting the whole light set up and all of that business inside somewhere. So anyway, let's just get into these jugs. Okay, so the first one here is the green globe artichoke that I already showed you. And I really, I'm impressed with the way they look in here because I did start some of these inside and I'm actually dealing with mealybugs on them. Like I don't have mealybugs on anything else up in my plant room, but for somehow they got it. Um, so I'm dealing with that and they're trying to get like way down in where the leaves kind of come together. And so it's been a little bit of an issue. I think I'm getting on top of it, but these look a little bit more robust and more healthy than the ones inside. So I'm really happy about that. I'm gonna go through the already opened up ones first. So these, I need to clean them out. The wind has, we've had so much wind over the last few days. Um, it's blown in stuff all over on top. But this is called Atriplex, Atriplex. It's Copper Plume is the variety. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in here. I mean, just look at the color of those leaves. This is one, I think it grows like 12 to 24 inches tall and it creates these like plum colored papery seed pods. And so they're really good filler for flower bouquets. Um, and this one, I think it does recommend that you direct seed it outside. So I have more inside in a packet ready to be direct seeded once we get our property all worked out up there. But I thought it'd be fun to try it in this. So I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. There was a little section toward the back that didn't have anything, but this is pretty good, I think. Based on what I'm seeing, through the holes in some of these other jugs. And then this here is the Facelia Bee Friend. This one was the first one to come up. It came up big and beautiful. This is the first um, lid that I opened up and I opened it up, I think too early and it, it got damaged um, because I did not come back out here and make sure it was closed up. It, I think it'll be fine. There's a whole bunch of starts in here. And this is where I kind of feel like, you know, it's a little bit when you're doing seeds and seed trays like upstairs I'll show you in just a little bit it's very organized and everything's separate so it's very easy to take them apart and well you don't have to take them apart 
you just can pop them out of their tray and plant them in the ground. And here, I feel like, especially if they put on a whole lot of size, they might sustain a little bit of root damage when you're trying to separate them. And one could not see things as heavy as I did in here um, to eliminate that problem. But you know, you live and you learn, and this is definitely a learning process for me. So this is the Mammoth Salmon Cream Sweet Pea, and I think the ones I started inside actually look better than these. I mean, we'll see once we get them potted outside or planted outside how they all take off, but there's five of them in here. Um, I think I did have the lid open on a very cold night and that could be why some of the leaves look a little bit worn out, but I mean, they'll still be a good plant. Now we can start opening. So this one is, I don't know, what is this? I think I got it figured out. I think this is the Buplurium, which is another filler flower that I wanted to plant out in our cut flower garden. So I did learn that this clear packing tape worked just fine, but the permanent marker did not. I would need to identify them some other way because it did wear off on some of these. Ah, they look pretty darn good and healthy. I am really impressed with these. There are several, like probably 10 of them in here. They look nice and sturdy. They don't look stringy at all. And so this is another kind of filler flower or filler green that's gonna go out in our cut flower garden. And I'm also going to be seeding some, direct sowing some outside as well. So that is exciting. Okay, next, this is cherry brandy. I think this is cherry brandy rudbeckia. Oh, we got a few in there. I seeded some of these inside too, and I did not have very good germination rate. So you can see right in here, there's something that doesn't look like a Rudbeckia. And then all the rest of these, there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in there, but they are pretty small. They're gonna need to be fertilized. In fact, I'm gonna fertilize all of these today now that they're all open. Um, so fertilizer, a little bit of heat in this greenhouse, and I think they'll start growing pretty quick. This is the Silvery Lupin. Oh, oh, these came up perfect. Look at that. Lupins are just the prettiest things. I love their leaves. I love it when water settles in their leaves like that. And these are all spaced out nicely. One, two, three, four, five, six of them in here. And it looks like there was a seventh that didn't make it. Um, but that's really nice because those will be really easy to separate. Uh, let's see, this is this uh, Scabiosa sal or Scabosha, I don't know how you say it, Salmon Rose. It's a type of pincushion flower. And they're looking really good in there, looking way better than the ones I have inside. I had horrible germination on all of my pincushion flowers inside. So this is an annual type of pincushion flower that I've never grown these from seed or the annual type at all. I have some perennial pincushion flowers out in my garden. So this will be a really fun experiment out in the new property. Hey, this is white stock. Those also look really good, really well spaced. Oh. Yay, that makes me excited. Oh, crickets. I don't know that we have any in here. This is a Celosia, 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 Selway terracotta. I got good germination inside on this, so I think we'll be all right. Oh, there's one. That one wasn't super successful. Dang. Oh, and I am cutting all the lids off of them but I will be labeling these as soon as we're done here so I don't forget what is what. And this is a Spilanthus tongue tickler, which is a new one to me. And apparently people, you can eat the leaves or something like that and it creates a sensation in your mouth. I don't know what that means, um, but I think that some people say that they use them for toothaches and tooth pain. Oh, those look good. Check those out. Those look really good. The rest of these, the seed that I have, I'm gonna be direct seeding outside. There's a whole bunch in here. They've got really cool little yellow flowers too. This is arrow leaf balsam root, and I don't think we've got much going on in here. One, one leaf right there. Hmm. I don't know much about this plant in particular. I just saw the packet of seeds and thought it would be fun to try, but I have extra seeds left over. In fact, I didn't use very many seeds, obviously in these water jugs. They don't take very many. So I have leftover seeds of all of these inside. Okay, Palmer's Penstemon. They look pretty good. They're all kind of toward the outside. And I do have to admit, 
that after a little while, after I was watering them every single day with the pump sprayer, which honestly, that's only good in the very beginning stages of a plant, like a seed's growth, like when they very first come up. Um, and then once they've put on just a little bit of growth, it, it takes way too long to water with a pump sprayer uh, if you're doing a massive amount of seeds. So I uh, kind of just stuck the hose like right on top of the holes here, which probably created this mess that I've got going on and they're all toward the outside, um, but that's okay. There's still quite a number of the plants in here and they look really good. I love penstemon too. It's a great perennial. Okay, this is Clary Sage. Ah, those look really great. Look at those. The leaves have that really interesting texture and they're kind of fuzzy and they look so great. Like they've had the proper amount of light. They're all like nice and robust looking and not stringy at all. I'm gonna bring these other, the other ones up here quick. So we've got seven left. This one is the Hungarian blue poppy. There's a little bit going on in there. Some of these I could probably just leave in the milk jug. So there's the poppy right there. Little tiny, little tiny babies. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in there, 10 in there. And you can see where my hose hit the, the middle there. And this is lovely penstemon. Oh, <laughs> not much in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10, 11 plants in here, but they're all really small. So this one needs more time to grow on. You know, I see some people's winter sowing projects where the plants are just enormous. Um, and I don't know if it's because maybe I let mine dry out once or twice um, a little bit too much, or maybe I just need to leave them in here longer until uh, into May because it is still getting quite cold at night here. Um, yeah, some of them are looking awesome, some not so much. This is an Ami Dara, which is an um, ornamental carrot. Uh, for my cut flower garden as a filler. This one did recommend direct seeding in the ground, so I'm gonna do that as well. But those look awesome. <laughs> there is another seed in there growing, it looks like. Like kind of a boulder leaf, I don't know what that is and if I should let it keep growing. But it looks healthy as well. Oh, I love this. I love the way those look. This one I'm really excited about. This is showy milkweed. You remember when I seeded this outside? Was it last year or the year before? I can't remember, but you're supposed to seed it when it's pretty cold out, but you have to kind of keep it moist until it germinates. And um, I didn't, uh, I planted it and then we went away to a flower show and uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't ever come up. So this is exciting to me for, there's eight plants in here. And milkweed does really well here. My parents have a patch of it that they have kept going since I was a little kid uh, because it's so good for the butterflies. Okay, straw flower, apricot peach. I have a whole tray, 72 count tray of this upstairs. It looks awesome up there. Oh, check those out. Several of them right there. They look super healthy. I really wanted to up my straw flower game this year because they dry so beautifully. And I just found myself this winter craving flowers like dried flowers or pressed flowers. I just wanted to do all kinds of projects with them. So I really wanted to keep that in mind this year of what I was growing so I could harvest and, you know, dry and press my own stuff, a whole bunch of them. This is Bells of Ireland. Oh, that's how I want them all to look. This doesn't look like one though. That looks, oh, that's weird. Is that a singing nettle? I think I might have a stinging nettle coming up in here as well. So there are three, six, nine, 12, 15. It looks like 15 of the bells of Ireland and one stinging nettle, which I don't know where that would have come from. It doesn't grow down here until, was it last year? I think I had three stinging nettles growing in our hay racks up front. So the only thing I can think is maybe like a bird flew by and brought us some seeds somehow. <laughs> um, I don't know. So anyway, that'll be interesting. I'm gonna leave it just to see what it, what it um, does, but you can tell, I don't know if you can see the difference here. The leaf structure is a little different. This one's a little bit more finely serrated. This one's a little bit more lobed. And this one does have like those, that prickly stem. Interesting. Oh, last one. This is a poppy, blue, blue, black swan poppy. I've had these seeds for ages, ages. They came with me from the old house, so I don't know how long poppy seeds keep. There's one. <laughs> but I do have more of these seeds out of the same packet, so we'll see. But 
Um, I have them inside to direct seed out hopefully this week. Okay, I'm gonna line them all back up here so we can take kind of an overall look. So here's an overall look at our winter sowing project as of right now. Now they are gonna stay in the greenhouse and honestly, I could have left them in the jugs for a little bit longer, especially these smaller ones. Because while they might not look successful based on the growth rate of these other faster growing crops, there's still a lot in there. And you know, once they put on some size and we separate them out, it's still quite a number of plants in a very small space without needing any special equipment. There were only three out of this whole bunch, I think that maybe weren't worth it. And it's the Celosia because there's just the one right there. The balsam root, there's just one. And the black swan poppy because there's just one. But that honestly could have been kind of an unviable seed in not viable seed and it could have been user error too. I might have let these dry out a little bit too much. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the results just because like I can see where this will really help some people out. I know it would have helped me big time in our last house because I did not have space to start a, a lot of seed. Like I could do a tray or maybe two, but I did not have the space to do it even though I wanted to do it. So this enables you to try some things out for a really uh, inexpensive cost um, and really like there's not a lot of skin in the game which is kind of nice so anyway yeah I don't know like my personal preference is probably still to grow inside if you can because it's a lot more organized and it's a little bit more predictable for me anyway um, so I will still probably do this I won't put it in front of the greenhouse next time that's the other thing they don't look the best and if you can kind of get past that which it wasn't a big deal um, but I did look at them for three plus months sitting out here in front of the greenhouse and they're just, you know, not the best looking things. But now I want to show you the seedlings that are in here and then I'll take you up into my plant room and show you what's going on there. So let's start with the sweet peas. You can see all of this massive amount of sweet peas. So it's all of these right here. Uh, these were started inside. They were getting way too tall for the space that they were at. So I needed to pot them up and bring them out here because it was still, they've been out here for like a couple of weeks, maybe more than that. Uh, and I just needed to free up some space. So they've done really well out here. They definitely need to be planted outside, which I think I'll be able to do here really soon. Um, the well is actually being dug on the new property today. So we're hoping to get the water set up quick. Um, these will just have to wait until they have a source of water out there to keep them happy. And then right here, we've got some foxgloves. Aren't these amazing? I cannot believe I started these from seed. I'm so proud of myself. Like I've done this before, but every year it makes me feel proud of myself. Uh, let's see, this is the pink gin foxglove. And this right here is the Camelot mix, which this one will not bloom this year. This one, I think the Camelot mix does bloom this year. And this one was a Camelot mix as well. These came out of the same trays. Uh, these were the bigger ones, obviously. And then this is the Magic Fountains Cherry Blossom Delphiniums right there. Those look really good. I've got a couple more inside I need to pot up and bring out as well. The last thing I have up here are nasturtiums, which I did not start outside. I actually just put them in like bigger in four inch plant cans to start them because they don't like to have their roots disrupted. And I thought if I planted them in little tiny seed trays and then had to bump them up in size and then plant them out in the landscape, they might not be very happy campers. So I just started them out here in the cold frame and they are starting to come up. It does take them a little bit longer because of course the temperature does drop in here at night, but they're looking really cute. There's actually 102 of them sitting here and I'm still waiting on quite a number of them to come up, but you can see that some of them already have. I planted two seeds per container and they're just so cute. I've got a bunch of different varieties here. Like this one is peach. Ooh. I've got moonlight, which is a white. I've got Vesuvius, peach melba, and ladybird rose. So anyway, these I'm sure will all come up. They are just kind of all at their own growth rate because you can see like here's a little tiny baby while this one right here is a little bit further along. So I'm really happy with those. All right, so now let's head into the plant room. So this is the plant room, which is essentially a converted bedroom. This is what my setup looks like. I have four different grow lights in this space that are larger and then I've got a menagerie of smaller grow lights that I'm not using right now and like clamp lights and things like that. Um, but kind of behind the scenes here, we've got a light here 
and another light, this is a big one, on this side because sometimes we do film in this space on really crummy days outside. And then I've got like a supply shelf with pots and saucers and stones and moss and stuff like that. And then some fertilizers and insecticides there. And that's how I water. I fling that hose out this window down. <laughs> We're in the second story right now. So it goes all the way down and hooks to a hose down there because it is so much more efficient than this. Pump sprayers are great in the very beginning, like I said, but not once the plants have put on some growth. I also keep two windows open in here during the day. So this one and one on the other side there, the wind travels in through this direction. This is the west side. So it's good, it keeps the temperature a little bit lower in here. It keeps the humidity levels in check. Uh, and it also makes the seedlings a little bit stronger to have some breeze, but I do have a fan going in here too. It's an oscillating fan and I move the a position of it every single day but those windows do get closed at night so let's just go shelf by shelf and I'll sh show you what I've got going on in here first off and like I've got some really good stuff going on and some crops that didn't do as well so I'll just kind of share my experience so this is iron apricot stock right here look at how beautiful that crop is I do need to come in and thin this because you can see I've got like four in some cells there's only one in that one three in that one um, I'll probably do that today or tomorrow. I've got two different crops going in this one. I've actually cobbled these two together because I had a whole flat of gumfrina. This is the Globosa mix, which I've had this seed since our old house and it didn't come up very well. Like I got, I think nine came up and one of them didn't make it. And so I've got eight left over that I just dug up and put in this tray along with the Fama white scabiosa, which is the pincushion flower because I had such poor germination with that one as well but the plants are looking okay. Um, this one was the seeds that were sent to us from Brad, I think from Evolution Gardening or something. Can't remember. Anyway, uh, I think that's who sent me these seeds. The tropical milkweed is clearly doing awesome. I planted eight of them, got eight pink cannas. I probably need to pre-treat that seed. It was like a really big hard shelled seed. So I'm not seeing any action there. And then there's yellow datura and there are a few of those up in the back. And then we've got Love in a Puff, which a gal, when we went to the Cleveland Home and Garden Show, she gave these to me in an envelope. Um, she had bought them from Florette Flower and saved some seeds. Uh, they're a really fun vine that get these really neat kind of like lantern looking seed pods on them. But I think that the foliage is really nice. These are getting a little bit tall, so I really need the water to get set up on the other property so we can get those planted. And then there's my lemon seedlings, looking good in here. Next row down, we've got Rudbeckias and Snapdragons. I've got a tray of 72 Sahara Rudbeckias. And I think, uh, let's see, there might be three cells that didn't come up, which is not bad. But you guys don't wanna know what I do. Typically, like with a cell, like this one right here. See, there's two. I'll dig one of these out and I'll put it in a cell that doesn't have one. So a lot of times like I will wait to thin them until they put on a little bit of size and that way I can dig them and fill in any gaps that I might have. This is the Potomac White Snapdragon right here. There's 72 of those. And then I've got a couple of 24 count trays, which let me tell you guys, these are the self-watering seed trays from Gardener Supply and I like to get them in the 24 count and they are an absolute lifesaver up here. Had I grown everything in these type of trays, you know, these are in six packs, the cells are little, and look at the roots are already coming out the bottom. It's really hard to keep these moist, and honestly, they're getting close to being planted outside, so it's not a big deal, but these are just so nice because I can fill up the self-watering, and then, like, we could leave for home shows, like for the flower and garden shows, and I wouldn't have to have, to have somebody water them because those trays would help get me by for a day or two, or even more. Um, these are the Madame Butterfly Bronze right here. There's 24. The ones in the back that are taller are the Apple Blossom Snapdragons, but you can see that I have already pinched this one. These were as tall as those, but I pinched them and what it does is it encourages side shoots. So instead of one stem, there's two coming out right here. So I need to do that to the back tray. Third shelf down, we have the Iron Let's see, iron blue stock came up beautifully. Need to thin that one. And this is a menagerie tray right here. 
I've got nine red currant tomatoes, which are the tiny little itty bitty tomatoes. I intend on planting all of these in the new cut flower garden because that's how I want to use these. There's two more delphiniums <laughs> that I need to pot up and take out to the greenhouse. Then we've got the garden gem tomatoes, which don't look super hot right now. I don't know what is going on with them. They're alive, but I think I need to pot them and take them outside. But let me pull these out because the hot and heavy peppers are like, they're going to town. Look at that. Look at the blooms. The plants look awesome. The next tray are tomatoes that I've had to pot up already and they need to go outside and honestly could probably use a little bit more fertilizer at this point. Um, these are the good hearted tomatoes. And then we've got one part of this flat is the salmon rose pincushion flower. And we got more out of those than the other variety, but still not a full tray. So I popped a couple of Cheyenne Spirit Echinaceas in there. Over here, Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia. See, look at my germination. I got two out of all of these cells. So I planted up nine cells and I got two. Um, and those are from seeds that I gathered last year. So I don't know what the deal is on that. Um, but those are the terracotta celosia right there. All of them that I planted came up. Then we've got, I did not have a very good marker up here when I made these. Gomfrina Audrey White came up beautifully. This is a Nicotiana purple, purple perfume. Look at those. Aren't those awesome? And then we've got a bunch of basil. So we've got cardinal basil, lemon basil in the back, cinnamon basil, and Thai basil. And these I intend on putting in the cut flower garden and I'm gonna let them flower and I'm gonna use them in flower arrangements. Down here, I've got some plants that are holding over, but I also do have one flat of snapdragons. This is a 72 count. You can see what the fan does to them. See how it blows them around a bit, makes them stronger. This, I don't know what happened to this tray right here, this pack, but they're kind of weird. Anyway, this is the Madame Butterfly Bronze with white. Next light system, this is the Craspedia Sunball. Got really good germination. I mean, this is a 72 tray and that I uh, got 100 seeds total. So some of the cells only got one seed, some got two. Um, most of the cells came up. There's like a couple that didn't, which is not bad. And then this is the Nicotiana, hold on, Indian Peace Pipe. So these have white blooms for maybe the west side moon garden and those came up gorgeous and these are all straw flowers <laughs> look at these trays let me pull them out these actually don't fit in these light systems very well but look how awesome those look so we've got the straw flower vintage white and i think this is the apricot peach and then down here this is my favorite so this is a hibiscus mahogany splendor look at how gorgeous those leaves are and when they're just emerging, they are just super vibrant and red. These are for the cut garden. And then these are a paper daisy called Perot White. Aren't those awesome? Oh my goodness. They look amazing. And then we've got three different kinds. We're using these tags. This is not a Calancho. This is a Aster. This one is the King Size Apricot Aster. These get enormous flowers on them and these will be a later season cut which is awesome so we'll have staggered bloom this tray is not awesome so this is the Bengal rose frost I seeded one round a few came up and I really wanted these because they're big white blooms I wanted them for the moon garden so I bought another packet and seeded them again and only one from that second second packet came up which is super weird so I'm not sure about those about those seeds and then the Aster Tower Violet, right there, full tray. Okay, this is our very last one. You can see the fairy garden from a while ago. We've got our Easter egg eggplants, which these seeds were sent to us. I opened them in a mail time. I started them out in a smaller tray and I have since bumped them up because they were putting on some good size. So I've got nine of those. These are the Green Globe artichokes that I started inside. And they're just, they're not awesome. I've had to keep pulling off leaves because, because of the mealybug problem and I've inspected everything around them and I can't find mealybugs so I don't know what the deal is, like how they got them. Who knows sometimes. And then this is a gonfrina called uh, QIS Purple <laughs> and a fairly good germination on that one. I had that seed packet for a really long time. 
And then on the very last shelf down here, we have amethyst basil. We have uh, foxgloves, rather, that we're gonna go outside and pot up. Look at this tray. Isn't that amazing? Like if you want to start something that is easy to grow, that's like super satisfying, start some foxgloves. So I'm gonna put these up on the table. We'll take those out to the greenhouse in a second. But I guess this gives me a good opportunity to show you kind of how the self-watering tray works. See this wicking mat? The wicking mat goes down into the reservoir, which I didn't fill it this morning because I knew I was gonna take those foxgloves out. Um, but the mat wicks up the moisture and then the tray sits on top of the mat and then just draws up the moisture it needs. So that's how that works. So amethyst basil, all looking really great. This is a, um, it had half pink gin in it. So half um, of the pink gins I dug out and they've already been potted up and they're in the greenhouse. The back part, this is cafe cream foxglove, which I might take these out and pot some of these today too, because look at how big this plant is right here. I popped some cotton plant seeds in here <laughs> and I actually think this is an eggplant. So like I kind of randomly pop extra seedlings in where I have space. Only like four of the cotton plants came up Two of them didn't make it, like they came up and they just immediately croaked. I don't know why. This one might make it, this one's doing okay. Um, but I'm not really that sad about it. Uh, this tray here was originally all white glitter oryngium, which is this one right here. But then I had some extra delphiniums that were getting too big and so I needed to pop them out of their original tray. So I need to take those out and pot those outside. And then the very last seed tray, these are my Lysianthus, which are about the same size as when they very first came up. This is the slowest plant I have ever grown. They better be worth it. And I think I'm only missing two cells. Like this one right back here is itty bitty. And then those two cells don't have anything. But I mean, the plants that are here, they look pretty good. The other thing I did want to mention, because I think this is pretty important. Um, so this is the bamboo LED grow light garden. We've showed it to you in other videos, but it has LED bulbs that are extra strong. <laughs> I don't know anything about light bulbs um, and how that works, but you do not have to raise and lower these for your seedlings, which is so awesome. So whether or not you've got big old tall seedlings or little ones, they're all going to be happy with the same height of light and they're all so cool. So I can touch this light bulb. There's no heat coming out of it at all. And these over here, I've been working on retrofitting them and putting LED bulbs in, but I don't think I've done it on all of them. Like, let's see. Yeah, I think these are still traditional bulbs. So you see, I have this one lowered so that it's just right above the seedlings. Like usually about four inches is really good. So you really want a lot of things that are about the same height in a grow system like this, because if you had something really tall and then a bunch of short things, the short ones wouldn't be getting enough light and they would still become a little bit stringy. So this grow light is really nice in that it allows you to raise and lower it uh, based on the growth rate of your plants. Like this one I could almost take out and swap with something shorter and then even lower it a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab this, which is the most handy tool ever for repotting seedlings out of your seed trays. And we're gonna take these out to the greenhouse and get these potted up. All right, got my foxgloves right here. I've got my soil and I'm just using regular potting mix now at this stage of their growth. And then I've got a whole bunch of used plant cans. So when I plant pansies or like I think these were all pansies. Yeah, the true blue pansies from up front. When I uh, plant things like that, I like to save the trays and the cans. Um, and that way I can use them for this sort of thing. And I knew this year I was gonna especially need them. Um, so I'm just gonna get them planted. Let me show you how easy it is to get these out of the tray with this little shovel. All right, see this one right here? I just slide my shovel in there and I can just pop the seedling right up. You can see the nice roots right there. Some of them will come out a little bit easier than this. Let me try again. Like they'll have a little bit more established root system. Yeah. That right there is what you wanna see. So I'll just gently like do this and it's ready to be potted. So. Just 
just pop it in like that and then backfill around it. And then when I'm all done, we'll water them all in. Oh, doesn't that look so happy? Okay, I'm gonna work on getting all the rest of them potted up. just look awesome. So I got, let's see, 24, 28 all together because there were several cells where I hadn't uh, thinned them out properly. So I had two in one cell, which is awesome. And those I expect to look a little bit droopy, like this one was looking a little bit droopy to me, um, but they should pick right up. I did give them some fertilizer. I'm out of the grow out here, which is probably what I would prefer to give them. I need to go get more. I've got a little bit left in the plant room, but bloom will work really well too. So. I think the point is just to get them fed and watered in. Uh, I do have four more left in the tray down here, but they're so tiny that I'm gonna give them a little bit of time to grow on inside before I pot them up and bring them out here. Um, yeah, I think that they were just being shrouded by the other bigger ones. And you guys, this tidy tray right here, this thing is a game changer for seed starting or any project outside really. Keeps your whole mess all in one spot, which is awesome. So it is supposed to get 30 degrees tonight. I'm going to leave these foxglove out here, even though, and did I mention these are Dalmatian peach foxglove? I don't even think I mentioned that. And they will bloom this year, which is so exciting. Um, and they are bi biennial, so they will bloom for a couple years. They'll set seed and they'll seed themselves all over where I plant them, hopefully. I want them to seed all, all over the place because foxgloves are such a favorite of mine. But since it's getting so cool out, it won't get near that in the cold frame because I'll shut the doors, but I will probably still throw a piece of Harvest Guard just over these. I don't throw them over those anymore because those are acclimated now, um, but I'll probably just do that tonight and they should be just fine. And I am just now realizing that I probably should have broken this video up into two separate videos because this is probably super long. I just kind of wanted to do an overall seedling update both inside, outside, do a little bit of potting and just show you kind of my process. This is not my process every year. It might be from this year on, now that we've got all that new space, but I've never started this many seeds all at one time. So for me, like this was a huge project, but then like I read some uh, flower farmers and things and kind of keep up on what they're doing. And they're talking about seeding like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of trays of stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, like, Oh, that would be so stressful for me. Like this is just, I'm starting small this year and I just want to get my feet wet and I know I'm going to win some, I'm going to lose some, but I'm going to learn a lot. And hopefully you guys can learn alongside with me based on how my, what my experience is. And I love to see your guys' comments too, if you have any experience growing any of these in particular, um, because I do read all the comments and I learn a lot from them. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope it was helpful in some way. I don't know if it was, but I hope it was. And I hope you guys are all having a really great day. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.